So I'm going to be using this spare piece of wood that I had in my house. And I'm going to be using this folk art chalk paint by Plaid. And I really like the way the consistency of this paint, this chalk paint. I really liked it a lot. Well, I'm just going to paint about two coats all over that wood sign. And the bottom, I didn't do two coats. I just did it on the top because you're not going to really see the bottom. I'm going to add some of this pretty decorative paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was only 69 cents. And then it's really nice because it's squares and I just measured from the squares to where I want it and where, where I'm going to cut. But you can use this pattern. They have so many selections of different decorative paper. So now I'm just gonna add it right to the bottom to where you can't even tell that it's two pieces. 69 cents, what a deal. So now I'm just gonna put some Mod Podge right on the bottom and I'm gonna add my paper right there. And I'm gonna put it right to the edges of the board. I press down nicely just to get the bubbles out because I wanted it to be flat. And then I added some more Mod Podge to the top. So I got my fingers and I just pressed along the sides just to make sure all around there's no bubbles. And I'm going to set that aside for a little bit to let it dry. So now I'm going to get these little cute triangles that Handsome Devil cut out for me. And he kind of curved the edges for me. And I am going to make little... Uh, watermelons so i'm going to paint green on the bottom a darker green i believe it's apple barrel i will leave all the colors that i use in my description box and they are all plaid paints thank you plaid i absolutely love using plaid paints it's folk art apple barrel i mean there's so many waverly So now I'm using the chalk paint, the white chalk paint, also just on there slightly to the bottom. So now there we go. We're going to put it right there around on the bottom. And I like mixing it and letting it bleed in a little bit with each other just to give them each a different, unique look. And I want it to look like handmade. I love making things where they look crafted and handmade. So now I'm using the Christmas Red. And that is Apple Barrel. And I'm just going to paint the top part. And there you have it. We are making little watermelons. Aren't they cute? I'm using the Black Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint also apple barrel acrylic paint. I got tongue tied. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm putting little seeds around. They don't have to be perfect, which seeds are not placed in a watermelon perfectly, right? So I'm hot gluing them to each corner. I put one on top and I'm going to put one on the bottom right on top of that paper. I did add some lines with a pencil and I wanted to add some knots. You don't have to if you don't want to and you can leave it a crisp color white or you can add the lines and no knots. It's to whatever your heart desires. It makes your eyes smile. That's the beauty about crafting is you make it to what you're happy with. So now I am cutting out with some cardstock black paper and I used my Cricut. And I just put sweet. Isn't that cute? I was out of vinyl, so I improvised. And don't worry. I mean, you can do that. If you don't have vinyl on you, you can use stickers. You can use, you can paint, draw, write, whatever you want. 
It doesn't have to be a Cricut cutout, but I love using my Cricut, I have to admit. And if I don't have vinyl, well, I use cardstock. And to me, it works just as fine. So sweet as a melon. Isn't that cute? And I'm moving it around. Now, mind you, if you are using the paper, the cardstock, it is hard to move off. I'm trying this new spray from Plaid. It's a Mod Podge spray, and I absolutely love it, but it really does stick well. I added some brown paper, packing paper, on the back of my sign. And I ended up adding a rope to the top so I can hang it. You could drill holes on each corner, or you can staple it or even glue it but there is my cute sign i wanted it to look rustic old kind of country i don't know i really love the rustic look this video is part of a collaboration with my sweet friend lisa marie you're gonna absolutely love her i will leave her channel link in my description box please tell her i said hi I know, I know you're going to love her. She is the kindest person you'll ever meet, living my best life with Lisa Marie. Now, DIY number two is very simple. I got a little piece of two by four wood and I just cut it in a shape of a little house. I got this from Making It With Jamie and it is Chalk Couture. And it is a nice stencil. It's washable. And I'm using it. I just cut it and wrapped it around to the bottom of this piece of wood. Very fast, very simple, easy. I will leave their link to their channel in my description box. So you can see all the wonderful chalk couture DIYs that they do. It's incredible. This stuff is awesome. And all you do is just paint right over it. That's what I did. And it pops right off very easily and nicely. This was so easy. So I did all the way around and now I'm getting this apple barrel green and all I'm going to do is just line the top of the little triangle part of the little house. And I'm using the chalk paint and I absolutely like this chalk paint it was really nice covers really well dries really quick and I put that right on top of the green and like I said I like to leave it a little wet because I do like to blend my colors in and especially if you're doing a watermelon look I like that how the green bled in with the white Kind of like how the real watermelon goes right when you look at it it's kind of like a blending of the colors in a real watermelon so after i do that i do it all the way around and don't worry it doesn't have to be neat if you want it neat you may do that do touch-ups i ended up doing a little bit of a touch-up but i like my things to look rustic and like i made it So now I'm getting that same Christmas red. 
oh, excuse me, I'm using the Waverly Chalk Paint in Crimson, and I'm painting the top of my little watermelon house. Now I'm going to take these little stickers, they're wood stickers I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to paint some green, and that is like acryl uh, acrylic, uh, metallic green, and I end up changing that because I wasn't too happy with that color for my watermelon, so I do end up going over it with the dark green of the apple barrel. And then I lined it with some white, and then again, I am making a little watermelon. It's so cute, a little watermelon. Now I'm using the Christmas red again, and I'm just going to paint the inside of that little lemon, which is really neat because you could paint it either a lemon or you can paint it a watermelon. Did I say lemon the first time? Hmm. What I meant to say is watermelon. <laughs> so there I go, and I'm changing the green because I wasn't too happy with the way that green looked on that little watermelon piece. So we're going to let that dry a little bit, but I'm going to put some little seeds on there first. And like I said the first time, don't worry about your seeds being perfect. No seed is the same size and none are fitting the same way all perfectly when you look at a watermelon, right? So now I'm getting some twine, but before I put some twine on this, I am going to do some more seeds right on top of my little watermelon house. I do put seeds all the way around the top of the watermelon. Make sure that the seeds in all your little watermelon house is fully dry before you do this process. Learn from my mistake because my little seeds were not fully dry, I think, and not that I think, I know, they weren't fully dry and they kind of bled a little. But if you let it set, and let everything dry it will be nicely and stay for you really nice so learn from my mistake i'm sharing that so now after it dries fully i go and i put some little dab of glue in the center and i just wrapped some of that twine a couple times around my little watermelon house oh i just love it with that little plaid looking on the bottom and then the wood seeps through you could see the wood peeking through love it you can even paint it white black and then have black and white so cute so now i'm just going to tie a nice little knot press it onto that glue so it stays and then i'm going to trim that excess piece of twine right off so now i'm going to put this little watermelon that we painted and I'm going to put it right in the center and I'm going to put it in a slight slant just to give it a little appeal and some character and then I make a plain cute little shoe bow tie and I'm just going to put that right there on top 
and put the little tails right underneath that little watermelon and glue it right there. Isn't that adorable? It look cute on a shelf, a tray, tear tray. I just absolutely love the way this turned out. So I got still some of that paper because I thought, hmm, let me add something to the bottom because I like to make things where it all adds together and matches. So I ended up putting some more of that decorative paper to the bottom of this little watermelon house. So I'm using this spray again. And I absolutely love this Mod Podge spray. It was really simple. I just sprayed a couple spritz and then just pressed down my paper and then wrap it around and voila, it stays nicely. I was very happy with that. It made things a lot simpler. You didn't have to use no brush, no sponge brush, and you just do a couple of spritz and there you have it. So now I just need to match that up just to make sure I close that little gap. Add a little more spray and add that piece. And there you go. So cute. Love it. My little wooden watermelon house. So cute for a tear tray. Rustic feeling farmhousey. Love the way this turned out. Very summery. Okay, now, now this I got at the Dollar Tree. It was one of the little wood box signs and I took the centerpiece off it and I just painted it with the white chalk paint. And I did two coats of the white chalk paint and when it dried, I just got that same decorative paper that I've been using in the project. This one sheet covered all my projects, all three projects from one sheet of paper that was 69 cents. Yes. So now I'm using that spray and I'm just going to do a few spritz all the way around on the sides and, and the inside. And now I'm adding some more of that decorative paper in the center. Press it down. And after I did that, I'm going to spray it one more time. Spread it around just to make sure that it sticks nicely. And after it dries, I left it the same with the little backing in case I want to hang it up. Or you can also stand it. I got one of those little pieces of watermelons triangles that I had painted and all I did was glue it right to the center of that little box frame. Simple as that and it's so cute and it matches my little watermelon house and it matches my little picture. I like to thank Lisa Marie for collaborating with me today. Please don't forget, check my description box out and go to see what she's made today for her, our sweet watermelon collab. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Be kind to yourself and others. Hugs, kisses, and fairy dust wishes. And don't forget, start crafting and make it till your eyes smile. I'll see you in my next video.